So first and foremost, don't threaten divorce unless you really are ready to get divorced, right? I know that a lot of times people say things in anger or reactionary. Here's the thing. Don't throw that gauntlet down because you never know how the other person is going to respond, right? So you throw, you know, I'm just going to file for divorce and they very well might be like, okay, you know, and have you serve tomorrow. So don't use that as some sort of, you know, um, what I say, manipulation tactic. You can't force somebody to stay in a marriage if they don't want to be in that marriage. And you dragging out the divorce doesn't do anything for anybody. And don't kid yourself in thinking, well, I'm doing it for the kids. It's best for the kids. You're not. Okay. Full stop. Kids are resilient. And as long as the parents demonstrate and model good and productive behavior, the kids will fall in line. Get help with a therapist. Get help with, you know, your um, spiritual advisor or your pastor. Go and get on a treadmill or hire a personal trainer or somebody to support you physically through this process. A divorce is all consuming if you allow it to be, and it really can impact you in ways that you don't otherwise um, expect. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today, and I'm excited about this episode. Today's guest is a divorce attorney and mediator. She has spent her career working with individuals and families of all race, races, ethnicities, religions, educational levels, political affiliations, and socioeconomic statuses as they navigate through divorce. She's a graduate of Spelman. She is the host of Grown Girl Divorce. We're going to talk about that as well that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, she's a, a, a licensed attorney in Illinois and Maryland. She, she had 15 plus years of divorce uh, litigator, law firm partner, and entrepreneur, fellow American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, member of Jack and Jill of America, member of Data Sigma uh, Theta Sorority. She's named in Best Lawyers of America Family Law and named in Super Lawyers of, in Family Law. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Kimberly Cook. How are you doing this evening, Kimberly? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited about this conversation and, you know, to hopefully help your community get uh, ready for marriage or those things beyond. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. So who's better than Kimberly to talk about this <laughs> whole thing with uh, legal insights, what you need to know before filing for divorce? Great topic. Let's jump into this because I want to honor your time. Who or what inspired you to become the woman you are today? Oh, that's a great question. I have to probably say my parents, which is going to be a little ironic because my parents will celebrate uh, their like 48th wedding anniversary this year. Um, and so, but I think in saying that they really kind of set the foundation um, for certainly me as a person, but knowing um, the importance of being in a true solid partnership um, and understanding who you are first and then being able to kind of show up in relationship. So I would have to say that, you know, huge part of who I am come from, uh, from my parents and all that they poured into me and, and certainly my siblings as well. Awesome. Awesome. I want to talk to you about grown girl divorce. Yeah. How did the podcast come about and, and what inspired you to start the podcast? Sure. So Grown Girl Divorce really came out of kind of my desire to reach beyond my own girlfriends. So, you know, as you kind of mentioned in the opening, um, I have been doing divorce and family practice for a very long time. And during that time, you know, one of the things that I recognize were that uh, women, particularly, you know, Black women and women of color, the experience of going through the divorce is very different, right? So arguably, the process for everybody going through the divorce is, is the same, but we know that the experience is different. And so what was I, I was finding was that there was this real kind of void in need for kind of a voice that was a cross between like, you know, your girlfriend and your lawyer. And so 
I thought to myself, you know, all of my girlfriends who have gone through kind of situations or had, you know, marital challenges or preparing to get married or preparing to get divorced, they had me, right? So I had both the education and experience to kind of navigate them through. And so by extension, I wanted to kind of share that same kind of experience to women who don't necessarily have a girlfriend who is a divorce attorney. And so it really came about in kind of reaching beyond my own kind of girlfriends. And so the goal of the podcast is to educate and empower Black women and women of color through the divorce process. And so we do that by highlighting other um, experts who are um, of color, as well as then personal stories of women who've been through the same experience. So it's conversational style, but it's all about kind of educating and empowering uh, women. Um, so it's it's been it's been fun. It's been great. And we have a good time with it. Yes, for sure. Because I was listening to it the other day and I was just like, this is so good. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> this is so good. And <laughs> I, and, and, you know, I thought to myself that you are the best friend for a woman or even a friend that's going through a divorce. Like you are the best friend. You have the best of both worlds going on. You know, it's like your phone probably never t- turns off. Uh, listen, uh, you know, here's the thing. I will say, luckily, you know, my girlfriends, they respect the fact that you know, there are some boundaries. And I think that's important. Anytime anybody has, you know, kind of that professional association, I I have to, you know, think about my girlfriends who are doctors, others who are lawyers, um, and, and teachers, any kind of profession, right? You have to have those boundaries where it's like, listen, I am not on the clock all the time. That being said, right? I do, though, know that when you are navigating the divorce space, you know, having somebody who can give you the direct information, but they know you personally. And so they can call you out. They can say, you know, look, this is what you really need to do or don't need to do. Or, and so there is that difference. And so, yes, hopefully grown girl gives a little bit of that feel to our listeners. And while I say it's directed to women, I will say we do have men um, and, and of all Um, you know, and races, ethnicities um, who do listen. But oftentimes when I'm directing a conversation, it is as if I'm talking to one of my my girlfriends, but all are welcome to listen because the information is certainly valuable across the board. For sure. I'm a listener as well, because I'm like, well, thank you. (laughs) Like eavesdropping. I'm like, oh, so that's what that's what women talk about. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, so. Uh, always trying to grow and learn. Are there any recent changes or trends in family law or divorce, uh, uh, family, family law and divorce that people should be aware of? Are there any recent changes? So there's a couple of things. One, I would always say that be mindful of what recent legal changes are happening in your own state, right? Because family law is state based. So the first thing you always want to keep in mind is that the laws in your state are going to control. So, you know, you want to kind of keep apprised big changes. You will hear it on the news in your state. People will be talking about it. Um, And so you, that's first and foremost, when we think about the idea of, you know, trends or changes Two, I would say that just nationally and really even internationally, there really is now been a big shift in change in how families are uh, proceeding in the process. And that's really the shift to dispute resolution. So you, you're you hearing a lot more about families getting involved in mediation or the collaborative process, or in some cases, arbitration or hiring you know, uh, individuals to help them navigate. So you hear more divorce coaches. And so that's really, I think, um, in large part, because during COVID, what happened? Well, courts shut down, right? And so those cases that were in mediation or in the collaborative process, they were able to keep going. Their issues were continuing to be able to resolve, whereas those who were completely and solely dependent upon the court system, 
there was nothing anybody could do. And so what we're now seeing is this real kind of awareness that getting into a dispute resolution process can really kind of help move your case along one, two, it's cost effective. And then three, it gives you real control over kind of what the outcome looks like. So I would say biggest trend is really this kind of real shift in the recognition that things like mediation really should be the first stop for families uh, when you're thinking about whether it's a divorce or kind of parenting matters if divorce is not uh, the issue before you, but maybe you have some parenting issues with, you know, a, a partner um, or someone who you were in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to know before filing for divorce? I, I mean, here, you know, scenario, I'm about to get a divorce because uh, I, I know a couple of people who's kind of, they teetering, they just like, yeah. Ugh. What would be your piece of advice to them when they both come to the realization that we we want a divorce? What would what would you tell them to do in these in this first step? So there's a couple of things, right? So I want to kind of break things down. So first and foremost, don't threaten divorce unless you really are ready to get divorced, right? I know that a lot of times people say things in anger or reactionary. Here's the thing: don't throw that gauntlet down because you never know how the other person is going to respond, right? So you throw, you know, I'm just going to file for a divorce and they very well might be like, okay, you know, and have you served tomorrow. So don't use that as some sort of, you know, um, what I say, manipulation tactic, right? No, be more mature. If you find yourself and your relationship is really moving in the direction of the divorce or a, a divorce, then I'd say to yourself, you know, Let's take a step back and think about all of the ways that we can make this the most productive and amicable. Again, I recognize that in the heat of the moment, sometimes it's hard to think about those things. But the reason it's important is because the first thing to know is that a divorce is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And if you come out the gate hot, you will burn out very quickly in energy, in time and money. So it's critical that when you're thinking about divorce, you understand, look, I got to pace myself here, right? Because there's no such thing as a quick, fast, hurry divorce. And anybody who's selling you that bill of goods is really sending you down a wrong path. Because people who kind of do this, um, you know, oh, we're not going to look into anything. We're each going to, you know, just kind of keep on. It's going to cost us $200 and we're going to be done. I see those people back in court all the time because they didn't take the time to make sure that the agreements that they were reaching were actually understood. They didn't take the time to tie up loose ends. And those are the loose ends that end up kind of coming back later on to really, really hurt you. So first and foremost, understanding this is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Next thing, when you're thinking about, you know, should we get a divorce? Should we not get a divorce? Um, you know, we've all kind of heard the, uh, you know, what's that, the, the proverb of, you know, don't cry wolf or don't scream fire in a theater, right? Okay. In the context of thinking about divorce, it's the same kind of thing. Everything for you might be an emergency in the court system. It's not. Mm. So be really clear about what emergency really is and what it isn't. As you're preparing for a divorce, First and foremost, safety is always an emergency issue, right? So if you're in a domestic violence situation, yes, that's always an emergency. What it isn't an emergency is I want to be divorced tomorrow so that I can, you know, start dating somebody else. Nope, not an emergency. It's also not an emergency vacation parenting time. Those things aren't emergencies. So if you've decided for yourself well, I'm done with this marriage and I want to be done, you know, tomorrow and everything needs to, you know, kind of go quickly as if everything is emergent. It's not. Again, we go back to marathon, not a sprint. The process doesn't just follow your time. Where people lose themselves is not understanding that the process only moves as fast 
as the slowest person. Okay. So if you are married to somebody or you yourself or somebody who's kind of dragging your feet or kind of taking their time, right? That's as fast as the process is going to otherwise move. If you're trying to use that as a strategic, you know, um, kind of model, right? Which some people think, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, drag this thing out. Okay, don't do that. Here's why. That's going to cost you a lot of money in in the long run and it's not worth it, right? So you want to be smart about things. That isn't to say that if you really aren't sure if divorce is really where you guys are headed and your thought is, I really want to see if we can work this out, then get into couples counseling. Try to meet with you know your pastor or a priest or spiritual advisor and really see, are there things that we can do? Maybe even consider meeting with a lawyer to talk about a post-nuptial agreement. So if your thought is, I don't want to rush into divorce because I don't know that we're yet ready for divorce, then take the active steps to do other things productively. But be mindful that you can't force somebody to stay in a marriage if they don't want to be in that marriage. And you dragging out the divorce doesn't do anything for anybody. And don't kid yourself in thinking, well, I'm doing it for the kids. It's best for the kids. You're not. Okay, Mm -hmm. full stop. Kids are resilient. And as long as the parents demonstrate and model good and productive behavior, the kids will fall in line. So I call out friends, colleagues, uh, you know, clients all the time. Stop mm-hmm. saying you're doing something for the kids when it's really about you and it's not really about them. There are very few things that are truly centered on the children. Most things really are centered on ourselves and we have a hard time, right? Right you know, pulling those two things apart. But the reality of it is that when you're doing certain things like not moving forward with the divorce process or not turning over information, or that has nothing to do with the children. That really is you either are not ready or you are, you know, intentionally kind of delaying or or manipulating. So I think, again, you know, keep in mind, you're thinking about divorce, know that it's a long process, Things are not an emergency and you want to be smart about how you kind of navigate things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other thing to do, again, we were talking a minute ago about um, trends and understanding things. It's really, really, really important for people to understand that, again, the laws in your state control. So Googling What the law in Maryland is when you're sitting in Texas is not helpful for you. You need to understand the laws in your state. It's really important, especially if you live in a state that is community property state versus an equitable distribution state. I'm throwing big words out, but the reason for that is because there's a huge difference between how laws are applied to marital assets or debts or things like spousal support and child support. So if you are in the space of, I'm thinking about getting a divorce, use that time to educate yourself and do it before you even meet with a lawyer, right? So, you know, there are tons of resources out there, whether that's, you know, Grown Girl Divorce website, you can check out our resources available, but Googling your state information Again, you want to start with what your state says about certain things. So if you're concerned about your property, if you're concerned about child support, then start with what does the state say in the state by which I live? Because that's going to help then guide the conversation when you meet with a lawyer. So Mm -hmm. these are things before you even hit the lawyer's door that you can already have kind of in place and knowing, right? So knowing and preparing yourself that when I meet with a lawyer, they may tell me it's going to take six months to a year to get divorced. I'm already mentally prepared knowing marathon, not a sprint, right? When you go in and you say, here are the things that I'm really concerned about, you've already mentally told yourself, okay, These three are not emergency, but maybe this one is. Again, 
before you even meet with a lawyer, you've mentally kind of prepared yourself for what their response is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then going in and showing this, you know, person that you maybe intend to hire that I'm educated. I know what, you know, at least a baseline of kind of what the law says, Mm -hmm. that's going to help you because that's going to tell the lawyer, I can't pull a fast one. I can't, you know, try to manipulate and, and, and kind of, you know, uh, run something by somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and, and those things are important. That isn't to say that lawyers, you know, always do that, but there are some out there who do, but you coming to the table and having at least a bare minimum of, you know, here's my understanding of, you know, the laws. Certainly I recognize, I don't know everything about it, but can you help explain these things to me? That's a real good way of starting out on a level playing field when you're in conversation, you know, with lawyers. So I think those things are real good things to kind of start you with. And then the last piece of that is this is not a solo game. Okay. It is, you need support. And I often see people who come in and There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. You know, there's a lot going into the decision uh, to to get a divorce or maybe it wasn't your decision and now you're angry, you're confused and and you've got a lot happening. Mm -hmm. Don't do this alone. It's not intended to be done alone. So by that, I mean, get help with a therapist, get help with, you know, your um, spiritual advisor or your pastor, go and get on a treadmill or hire a personal trainer or somebody to support you physically through this process. A divorce is all consuming if you allow it to be, and it really can impact you in ways that you don't otherwise, um, expect. Mm -hmm. I've had several clients who gained a ton of weight. I've had several clients who've lost a ton of weight. I have people who had never been on anxiety medication, they get a divorce filing and all of a sudden, you know, they need all kinds of medication. Get the support that you need so that you can be the best you through this marathon, right? Through this process, because it's really important to have that because it can make all the difference. Mm -hmm. So that's my, you know, Very quick and dirty, what you need to know. Uh, You know, I can talk about divorce for hours. So, you know, what you you need, I got you. Exactly. It's why I brought you on the show, right? (laughs) (laughs) You you, you talked about about children, um, you know, and and the reason, because some people say I'm doing this for the kids and stuff. What is your advice for people who say, um, I'm going to stay in this marriage for the kids? Don't do that. Don't do that. And and here's why. Mm -hmm. Because look, kids see everything. Any parent will tell you that they are watching and they and and they notice everything, right? Little sponges. 100 percent right even when you don't think that they're watching, they are. And when you're modeling certain behavior, right? Modeling behavior like I'm staying in an unhealthy or unhappy marriage for the sake of the children. What you're telling them is, I don't value myself enough to move into a different direction. Now, before I get a bunch of emails that are like, well, but I'm putting my kids first and I'm this, ask yourself, would you want your son or daughter to be in the kind of relationship that you're in? There's a good chance that you're going to say, absolutely not right? Because we want our children to have the best of everything. You deserve that for yourself. So don't stay for them, right? You can be the best you, even if you're not. And oftentimes when you're not in a relationship that doesn't allow you to be the best you. So don't put that on them. Seriously, go ahead and make the next step. And he, I will tell you, I have had both friends and clients who have come back later and said, 
the minute I got divorced and the minute we moved out, my son or my daughter was like, it's about time. Or I've been like, you know, you're so much happier now. Or so don't do that to yourself, but certainly don't do that for them. They do deserve for you to be happy. You deserve for you to be happy, to be in healthy spaces. And you would want that for them in their own relationships. So model that kind of behavior. That that That's what I say. I am not a let's, you know, let's stick it out because no, it, it just, and there's a good chance that the longer you stay in that, you know, real toxic, really unhappy, that now things are bubbling at the surface and you don't know at what point things really become explosive. Even if you say to yourself, we're cordial, we're, you know, that there, there is a cloud hanging over the house. Don't let it sit there. You really got to move. You got to move on from that. You really do. I agree. Cause it, you hear, you hear so much, you know, not to say, well, let's talk about this now because some people, they kind of like on a, on the fence about that. They like, I want to stay with the kids. And then here's the reason why I shouldn't stay. So I, I had to ask that question. And thank you for asking that. Cause I, I get it. It's a hard one. When you have kids, it's hard. It is. For sure. Cause I, I've been there and I was like, you know, I'm not going to stay in this marriage for the kids. Cause we, we arguing every day. Um, see? So yeah. So it wasn't healthy for, for my daughter um, to see that on a regular basis. So Okay, uh, Kimberly, let's have a little fun now. Let's all right. Uh, yeah, let's have a little fun. This is the bonus round, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. There's no wrong answer; it's just in the mind of Kimberly and which. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so let's do this. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? They lose themselves, right? Don't lose yourself in the relationship. Show up in who you are in the way that you are. Right. Um, and and when you find yourself constantly kind of, you know, acquiescing or, you know, silencing your voice or not really being you, that's not the relationship for you. So I think biggest mistake is staying in or, um, you know, being in a relationship that you are not allowed to be your true self. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I will say, personally speaking, I knew I had found the right person because I am a lot. Okay. I will admit that I'm a lot. I'm dramatic. I've been that way my entire life. And he has always allowed me to be me. Okay. And, um, but in doing so, right. Never, I've never felt kind of silence. I'm not, now he will call me out and be like, you doing a lot today. However, however, he allows me to be who I am. And, and so that is how I knew this is the, this is the person, this is pr the person for me. And I say by extension, that's when, you know, because you find the person who allows you to be your true self. Yeah. I love that. Cause a lot of women do lose themselves in their marriage and in their relationships. Uh, I heard a therapist say the other day, she was talking to, uh, she was referencing women and she said, your value isn't what you can do for others. 100%. And here's the thing, women tend to do the same thing when they have children, right? They tend to um, prioritize the children's needs and try, you heard me say a minute ago, look, your children need you to be at your very best. And if you can't do that, you're a better mom when you feel good, right? And and so um, it's a hard thing. I, I get it. I'm a mom and I'd be lying if I said there weren't times where you know, I am not showing up in the way that I probably should as their mom, because I'm so worried about kind of taking care of everybody else that I don't take care of myself. However, I think that's the biggest mistake just consistently that, that women make both in relationships. And then when, you know, when you become a parent. I agree. From seeing your parents relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? You know, that it's, um, it really is a seesaw, meaning that, you know, 
when my mom is having, you know, a, a down day, right? My dad is there to kind of balance that with an up. And, and you do that throughout, right? And so um, really watching them, they truly have um, a, a real partnership. Um, and I think that in and of itself um, was something that I knew without kind of knowing what I was striving for. It was finding somebody who compliments you in the way that, again, allows you to be your best self. Um, and, and who loves you um, for who you are, um, but also somebody who really, no matter uh, what, uh, you know, I had a dad who, um, you know, back before it was, I don't know, uh, cool or okay for men to cook. I've always had a dad who cooked, right? Um, I've always, you know, had a mom who can, you know, move furniture and kind of there, it wasn't, there wasn't like gender roles in the, in our family. It was shit got to get done. It's getting done regardless of who it is. And so I, I think that's what I always knew I wanted. I think, you know, so that foundation of this is a real partner, right? We are in this together in all ways and not in kind of the defined you, this is your role. This is my role. We stay in those lanes. It's this is us together and we get this done together. Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay. This is a <clears throat> multiple choice. So stay with okay. Is it harder for you to say, A, I apologize. B, I need help. C, I love you. D, I was wrong. Ooh, that's a good one. I I would probably say B. I have a hard time asking for help. I do. And, and, um, yeah, I I think that's, uh, that's my, that's the one for me that I have worked on over the years and just kind of saying, I need help. Can you, can you help me? I've always kind of been that independent. I can figure it out. I can do it myself. I can, um, you know, so that that's the one. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say I need help, and, and it's it's always interesting to to hear the the why. And, you know, especially when you have someone, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, even now, you know, I I think um, I don't know. I think it, it just again, there's something to be said. We all kind of want um, to be able to do things and and to feel like I got it right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think there is a real strength in knowing when you need help, right? And and knowing to ask for it, but then also to be in relationships. So whether that's an intimate relationship, a professional relationship, uh, where you know that you will get that support without that otherwise kind of being shamed or embarrassed or whatever. And so I think there's that real, real value. But yeah, for me, it's the it's the asking for help. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's cool. Like when your spouse or your significant other asks you for help, I think it's cool. It makes you feel. It does. You know, it makes you feel valuable. Like, okay, like I got you. You know. Yeah. Oh no. And here's the. I'm always happy to give help. Right. <laughs> you know. It sometimes. You know. Speaking for my husband's behalf, he's probably like, even when I didn't ask, but <laughs> you know, it's all good. No, but yes, I agree. I think um, having that um having being asked there's something about being asked for help that that makes you feel good so yes yeah i agree last question there's no right or wrong answer is it easier to love yourself or someone else ooh wow i would probably say um i think it's easier to love someone else i think um Speaking from personal experience, I think um, there have been ebbs and flows where, you know, I didn't realize I wasn't loving myself because I was so busy putting other people ahead or I was. Um, and so I think for me, that has been, again, kind of a journey in in really kind of saying, am I showing myself, you know, real love? Um, whereas 
by extension, loving other people, you know, my family, um, and even, you know, uh, good friends or, or, or colleagues, like that has never been something that has been a challenge for me to kind of show love and extend love in the way that I, um, that I do. Like, I'm not a touchy feely person, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm a gift giver. I, I like good gifts. I, I like handwritten notes. There are some things that, that I think, you know, friends and family would be like, oh yeah, no, you know, when she like, you know, really loves you, but, um, within myself, you know, self-care and, and taking that time and, and really kind of sitting with, um, who I am. I think that has, has evolved, you know, certainly over time. Um, and maybe that's evolved with life experience, um, and, um, and comes with age and maturity. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Cause I was going to ask you, what does loving yourself and your personal life, what does that look like for you? You know, I think it now it means making decisions uh, about things that are really important for me, right? And not and and being okay with those decisions. Um, and and that has changed over time, right? Because there was a time where I made decisions based on what other people wanted or what I thought uh, would make it better for everybody else. But now being in a space of saying, no, this is what I want. This is what I need. And, um, you know, and certainly in consideration of of others, but really allowing myself to be honest with myself about about what I want and and what my needs really are and and making sure that that's not lost. Um, And so I think that is how I show love for myself now. And of course, the occasional like spa day and, you know, yeah. <laughs> champagne brunch, you know, those things. <laughs> no, for sure. Totally. No, this this has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Kimberly, I want to acknowledge you for everything that you do in uh, the arena of family and law and divorce and stuff like that, because divorce is, it can be so messy. I've been through one. Um so I want to acknowledge you for that. I want to acknowledge you also for starting the podcast. Um, so just in case if someone don't have direct access to you, they can listen to the podcast and, and get great content there. Right. So uh, I want to acknowledge you for that thing, for being a mom, for being a wife and uh, just looking out for the culture in this arena of marriage and divorce, because I'm a big advocate of of healthy marriages and relationships. So I know you doing it on the the legal side, so not like I'm doing it on the legal side, but I'm right. just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yes. Yeah, yes. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. do. I do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I, you know, I appreciate you reaching out and, and, you know, having me on and, and having this conversation. Um, you know, certainly I am, I really believe that sharing is caring. And the more that we have conversations, certainly within our community about, right resources, getting help, getting information, we are all better for it. Um, and, and so that is why, again, you know, the podcast is there for people to get information. And my hope is that there's some nugget that you can kind of take away, whether it's for yourself or for a friend, a cousin, a colleague, or coworker, because we never know who needs the help. We never know what people are going through. And so, you know, the more we can kind of share that information with others, I think we, again, we are building a stronger community and, you know, a stronger uh, kind of legacy for our own children. And and that I think is, is really important. Yes, for sure. Well, let everyone know who's watching and listening, how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, sure. So certainly, you know, we've talked about the podcast, check out the podcast, which is Grown Girl Divorce, um, which is available on Apple, Spotify, Our Heart, um, as well as our website, which is GrownGirlDivorce.com. If you go on the website, you can also uh, get in touch with me through the website. If you have questions or topics on uh, that you'd like to discuss on the podcast or the blog, certainly reach out. If you happen to be in Illinois, I do have um, a divorce and mediation uh, firm. Um, and that is Dovetail Conflict Resolution. So we do prenups, we do postnups. We do divorce and family mediation Mm -hmm. and divorce coaching. So check us out. That's Dovetail 
uh, conflict resolution. That's so that's dovetailcr.com. Um, you know, that's where you can find me and certainly on social media at grown girl divorce on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you heard it here, Brave Arts community. I'll have everything linked up in the description below. So for those who want to get in touch with you, they have all that information below through the, through the links. Brave Hearts community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone. As I told you before, we need the, the, these conversations in your group chats. You need to send the link to your friends in the group chats. So that way you can have four or five listeners at one time instead of one person. You got to get in the group chats. Um, if you <laughs> are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. We've given a free Amazon gift card away a couple months ago. So who doesn't like free stuff, right? right? But make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. This is Sean Heineman with special guest, Kimberly Cook. <laughs> Brave Hearts community, take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.